meeting to order. This is a meeting of the uh, Reading Municipal Light Department Board of Commissioners for uh, its July 20th, 2017. We're me this meeting is being videotaped at the RMLD offices at 2.30 Ash Street, Reading, Mass. The meeting is being videotaped for distribution to the community television stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. Uh, let me read our um, code of conduct. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the chair on items on the official agenda as well as on items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions and comments from the public be directed to the chair and that all parties, including the members of the RMLD board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board and responding to comments. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. It is the role of the chair to maintain order in all public comment and ensuing discussion. So we have a visitor from the CAB. Okay, welcome. Happy welcome to be here. Welcome. Welcome, you Neil. Make any statements? Why are you? I, I have no statements to make. Thank no you. No opening statements. Okay, very good. Now let's see. I see no liaisons out there mm -hmm. and staff. And uh, public comment. Dave, you wanted to make you uh, requested time. Oh, just just a moment to say that I think as uh, from the last meeting, I believe that April presents a deadline for certain solar uh, renewable energy credits. If that's right, Jane. And I guess it was just, I think it's the sense of the board that we as a, a commission would like to encourage any uh, development proposals to be brought forward and, and to, if we can, if they make business sense, you know, get things done before this deadline uh, in our district to get, to get solar generation happening, both for public and private sites. And I, um, that's just the sense I've had from our strategy meeting and other, other sources. And just want to put it out there that that deadline is real and uh, from all the news accounts, th these credits might be drying up, and um, you know now's our moment to, to put our foot on the gas. I think we're all we're all in agreement with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I ask one question, yeah, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Jane, what is the cutoff? Like, what has to be done by April? Yeah, we're in the process of looking for that specific. Okay. Um, I'm not certain if it has to be approved. Constructed oh, okay. Or, yeah. So we're, we're we're looking into those uh, qualifications. Thanks. Jane, is there anything the board uh, can do to? It'd be helpful uh, in terms of uh, either evaluating things or encouraging or I think the board has been very receptive yeah. in terms of giving us direction um, in terms of meeting with the towns um, as well as um, the amount of uh, solar that you're right. interested in achieving in this short window um, so that would be helpful okay. I think we're here for you and there's also been some discussions what, at, the, with the t at the staff level with the towns of Wilmington and the towns of Reading, if I understand correctly. Uh, we met with uh, Linfield on July 10th, yep. and they're very receptive to the idea. Uh, Wilmington came in yesterday, the 19th, yep. uh, very receptive. We're working on a potential RFP for them to put out, and I'm meeting with with Reading tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Okay, and these all are like potentially municipal or school building Correct. sites? Correct. Okay. That's great to hear. Thank you. You're welcome. Very good. Um, okay, before I move on to the minutes, I do want to note that uh, Colleen, the manager, is on vacation to this week and is not here. Uh, Wendy, uh, the uh, Wendy's title is business manager. What's her official title? Director of business finance. Business manager. She's also on vacation and will not be here this week. So we got Hamid and Jane are, are the co-presenters here tonight. Skeleton crew. <laughs> Very capable. Well, we also have Tracy here. So we have we have the big three here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, very good. Uh, let's move on to the approval of the minutes. So if we could do this as one motion, be great. I don't know if people got changes in any of the minutes they want to they have, any of the particular ones. Instead of doing it each as individual, I'll accept the motion <coughs> to accept them all. Um, I'd like to make a motion to accept them all. Okay. In one motion. All is presented. So that's the minutes for September the 29th, October the 20th of 2016, December the 15th of 2016, January 31st of 2017, February 21st, 23rd of 2017, March 23rd of 2017, and April 20th of 2017. Was that seconded? Second. Second. Moon to second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Moses, that motion carries 5 0. <laughs> 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 all right. Victory. What was that vote again? What was the. I like to keep her. 5 0. 5 0. Five zero. That takes five zero. <laughs> it was unanimous. <laughs> You know, you can use your hand to just keep okay, track. Okay, got it, got it. Our sixth board member wasn't available. <laughs> the sixth man was not, was not available. 
All right, let me go on to the report of the chair. This is just basically an item I'm looking for information. Uh, right now, we, the, basically the department, uh, in terms of the financial statement, is on a fiscal calendar year, ending June. It goes from July 1st to June 30th. The report that goes into the DP, what do they call themselves, DPU? Yeah, DPU. They still call them, okay, they still call themselves the DPU. The DPU is basically on a calendar year. So basically, we put a, we put a lot of burden on the department to do these two reports, because we've got two different cutoff dates. What's, Mr. Chair? Uh, yep. The, so DPU's calendar, and what's the other one? The, the, fis, our, the financial our statements on, our on the fiscal yeah. year, because that's the same fiscal year as the town. Yeah. <coughs> so, I mean, we've talked about, you know, kind of, uh, you know, cutting, you know, taking, looking at costs where they come and see what we can, we can do. And so I'm, realizing, I'm looking for the department to put together some sort of idea as to how much extra this has cost by having these two fiscal, these two year ends these two different year ends, and whether or not we could, you know, go back to just, uh, you know, because at one time we were a calendar year end, and, you know, that changed at one point, and whether we go back to that and we get that audited, and we only have one, deal with one cutoff each year as opposed to two. Go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Chair, so um, I guess two comments. I guess one question would be the town manager's perspective on, because obviously, uh, I don't know how much synergy there is with our budgets and their <coughs> budgets for dependability, so uh, that might be one issue. The secondly, I don't know, and I'm not sure Neil could speak tonight for all the towns, but I don't know to what extent it would impact, you know, Linfield. And, <coughs> but I think it's a good idea because right. having two separate reportings, and I mean, I'm used to calendar and all the things <coughs> in my life, so uh, yeah. I would see that as a... Yeah, so again, it's, 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 it's more just gathering data at this yeah. point. You know, because basically, you know, under the, when we had a calendar year, and I, I hope I got this right, the audit costs were less than we're now paying. So that would, one thing would be to talk to the auditors and see, you know, because it was a different time. And so there was, the audit fee was less than it was, is one of the examples of something that I have here. And the fact we have the two cutoffs, you know, in terms of getting that information together. And the, it seemed to me that the information that goes to the DPU that really should be the final audited information, which it really is not right now. It's only audited really for the first half year. For the so it's double work. Year. Double work, yeah. double work. I mean, and I'd like the department maybe to think about that and, and get some numbers back to us in terms of what that is. Not yes. that we're gonna change, you know? Not that we may change, but I'd like at least to explore the idea again at this point. Yes, Go Mr. Ahead. Chairman, I, I agree with that. I think it'd be a, a good thing to synchronize the two. And um, if anything, there may be only one year where they have to go through a partial year this year right. and then the next to synchronize the two and then from that point forward I would think it would be either less cost or the same cost as right. we've experienced in the past. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah ahead. so this is actually <coughs> more a subset of that discussion but uh, and, and when Wendy's here it's more appropriate but maybe we could just make a note uh, Tracy for when Wendy is back and it, it's really around regardless of what uh, fiscal year parameters we establish. One of the things that I, I think we talked about. Uh, I know I raised it last year. Maybe is uh, without, you know, doing a full-fledged report. The the uh, opportunity maybe to get some kind of uh, view of the financials. I, I understand the reason why, and all our companies have that same struggle. But I think, what do we, Jane or I mean, do we, are we pre presenting financials tonight without or? It, but if I guess regardless, what would we be presenting tonight? What months? For yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> what I'm really, and again, and it's not a criticism because I we we struggle with the same thing. But because of the timing of how we close things, from a responsiveness point of view going forward, uh, you know, where that's a, you know, where it's July, it's almost August, right? And we're looking at May, so that's really rear view, right? So a lot, any any actions we wanted to take, if there were an issue, there isn't is really, it's hard to be very nimble because <laughs> we couldn't implement anything until September or October <laughs> and, and we're back in May's data, you know what I mean? So I, I, I don't want Wendy to feel we have to redo the financials and again, it should, the discussion should happen with her, but some way to maybe get at least a, a scorecard on the financials of what it looks like generally because I'm sure some of that information must be around. Okay. You know. The idea is this is just a starting point at this point, just to get, just, you know, get data and request the data at this point. So, any other comments from anybody? 
good point. If not, let's go on to the power supply. Jane, come on, on, come on down. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the floor is slanted. But I'm not sure <laughs> which way? It's actually this way. Isn't it? Uh -huh. <laughs> sure, she's going down. Yeah. Come on down. Uh, actually, we're, I believe we're on, we were on a, a hill. Actually. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Pacino. Uh, a couple of community events uh, that RMLD is involved in. On August 7th at 10 o'clock in North Reading Park and Rec Truck Day. Uh, that will be at 15 Central Street in North Reading. RMLD will be participating. On August 15th excuse, at... Excuse me, Jane, what, what is it? Is that like a, a kids thing? Or? Correct. Oh, okay. Correct. Touch a truck where they can climb in the trucks. Uh, various de uh, departments from North Reading will be there. And because... Um, it's at 15 Central Street, North Reading. Okay. Yep. Um, and on August 15th at 7:30 a.m. Uh, at the North at the Reading Library on Middlesex Avenue, uh, they will be having a truck day as well, and RMLD will be participating, and there to hand out a few goodies. On September 10th, um, from 12 to 5, the Reading Town Fair will be happening in uh, in Reading. Uh, RMLD will have a booth there participating with giveaways and information. Uh, currently, uh, we're, RMLD is holding a high school art contest. On August 1st, uh, we're going to have an educational session. Uh, well, we so far have 19 registrations, um, which is pretty significant for it being summertime. It's open to grades 9 through 12 um, for students in Reading, North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. And we're hoping to get two-dimensional art, whether it's um, graphic art, photography, um, drawings, et cetera. So um, we're really encouraging uh, students to participate and looking forward to that. Uh, our public power open house will be on Thursday, October 5th. Hopefully that won't be here too soon because the summer is enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I'm sure Hamid will be talking about um, in August we'll be holding the ribbon cutting for the GG. So we'll start with our power supply report. Go next, uh, move on. Uh, this particular pie chart looks uh, at May of 2016, and it kind of gives, it depicts RMLD's resources that make up the portfolio. As you can see, approximately 15% of the resources are renewable, which include hydro, wind, and solar. Uh, nuclear represented around 14%, the spot market about 15%, and uh, the rest of the system was around 55%. And that just kind of tells you where we're buying our different, the types of resources that are included. Uh, the nec the next ahead. chart. Jane, you got a question? Sure. Yeah, now or when it's appropriate, Jane, can you speak to, I'm, I'm guessing I'm not the only one that's received uh, 100 calls on uh, <laughs> the electrical rates going up and renewable. Uh, are you familiar with that? Do you Correct. I'm very yeah. familiar with that. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe just how that impacts us and the, the listening audience. Sure. Absolutely. Um, on July 1st, uh, the RMLD filed uh, new rates with the uh, effective July 1st. We filed them in June, um, uh, effective July 1st, with the D Department of Public Utilities. Um, the major drawing, uh, the cause of the rate increase is related to our capacity and transmission. Uh, Capacity has increased fivefold, um, and it's actually remarkable. I was looking through some ISO bills on Friday, and the capacity component of our of RMLD's bill uh, for just the month of June was two million dollars, um, and that is a direct pass through. That's a re result of the auction that the ISO procures, and um, three years ago, uh, Footprint Power was the successful winning bid. Uh, and they submitted a bid of $15 per kilowatt month um, to, to be in that auction, and it cleared. So all the utilities in the Northeast Massachusetts area, which is the Boston area, um, are subject to paying for that because we're located here. Um, and so RMLD's response of that is a pass-through. So uh, we, we've, we've crafted many programs to try to manage that peak, such as our Shred the Peak a campaign, all of our rebates programs. Uh, but that's a real cost, and that is reflective of last year's peak. So what we peaked on on August 12th of 2016, RMLD is required to cover that amount plus reserves for the whole um, capacity period, which runs from June 1st to May 31st. So that's the driver of the increase. Correct. 
Uh, additionally, transmission has been increasing on the range of 4 to 6 percent uh, at each year. Uh, because a lot of these projects require uh, infrastructure upgrades to the um, large voltage wires that bring the power from the generators to the, to the cities, uh, that cost gets socialized through all the customers in the New England region. Those costs have dramatically increased over the last 10 years by $9 billion. So every month, we, our customers are subject to those costs, and there's really nothing to do that we can hedge those costs because um, they have to get the power to the, to the load centers. Um, and so those are the driving costs. Uh, additionally, RMLD has implemented some maintenance programs, uh, which we have been um, working on for the last couple of years, and so that's a contributed slightly. So 60% of the overall increase in the July bills are reflective of uh, capacity and transmission. The good news about that is energy is kind of stabilized, um, and that's a, uh, a pass-through as well. So we're hoping uh, that that will remain flat or slightly decreasing, uh, so that will have a positive impact on the, on the customer's bill. And really, uh, as a message to our customers, you only get charged for what you use. Uh, so if, if there's a situation where you know, customers are feeling a pinch, we would encourage them to reach out to the department to look for conservation efforts. You know, LED light bulbs are a good way to use a lot less power than incandescent light bulbs. Fans use less energy than central air conditioners. Um, so we, can, we there's some tips on our website, and we'll be happy, our customer service department will be happy to work with customers uh, because you only pay for what you use. And if so, if you're able to use a little less, uh, that could help maybe um, control some of the costs. One last question. What is the, uh, I never pursued it, but what's the purpose of the telemarketing? They say if your bill is less than $150 or, or more than or something, then you well, press a number and they'll, I mean, do you know what they're driving at? Are they? Well, what that what you're getting is you're getting a robocall because I get right. I get at least six of those yeah. in the office every day at night. And yeah, I think up. some of those telemarketers are, are really focusing on uh, customers that are su not subject to deregulate or that are subject to deregulation, so they have an option for their power supply. Uh, the the issue here at RMLD is our rates are so much lower than those customers who do have those options. You know, our rates are, you know, 30 to f almost 50 percent lower than those customers the that are. The calls are still coming here in the Correct. In the yeah. I got one the other night saying that we, we're, your bill's going up 40 percent. I was like, when did we vote that? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> the chairman of this committee. <laughs> Does that you know, answer so, your question, Tom? You know, what, yes. I, what, I, what I want to stress is to everybody out there is, yeah. You know, if you have a question, please call the department. Correct. We'd right. be happy to work please with the customers. Please call the department. Don't, you know, and, and ask questions. Yep, yep. They will We're actually here to serve help. them, and right. so we'd be happy to speak with them. Mr. Yes. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yeah. Uh, so and this gets back to why if we can generate power in the district, we're not subject to any of the capacity or transmission charges that you just enumerated as being such a huge driver of the recent rate increases. Correct. That means if there's a solar generator, even if we're buying the power for roughly what we're selling it for, we're saving on transmission and capacity charges. And for the portion that that solar is generating during that peak period, that is correct. Right, and and even when it's not peak period, there's the transmission co cost that we're not paying. Correct, even when it's not peak, we're not paying to get it from here to there because it's already here. Correct. Right, or from there to here because it's already here. Correct. Yeah. So, this is why to get back to the earlier point, mm -hmm. anything we can do. And how's the gas generator doing? Good, very good. We're we're. we're going to report we're, on that. Hamid will report on that when he gets up. <laughs> Jeez. Thanks. Okay. So this cost here looks uh, again. We're comparing May of 2016 to May of 27, just so we can we can give the board a, a snapshot in time. Um, in this cost, we we've, we've actually included the percent of usage by type of resource, and then we've added the cost structure, so you can get a, a sense of the different costs and the magnitude. Uh, so in the month of May of 26, the average cost of energy for the RMLD's portfolio was about three and a half cents, which is, is, which is very reasonable. Um, some of the renewables, wind, we pay a little under 10 cents for that. Solar is around seven cents. The nuclears, um, it's at like not even a penny. Um, so that, it's significantly cheaper um, for those, for the energy portion of that. Um, and it goes through, talks about the spot market, 
22 and our system costs at 46. Um, and so the next slide. Yeah, Shane, oh, sure. why wouldn't we buy more nuclear if it was so cheap? Are you restricted on how much you can buy? Well, nuclear? there's none being built. Uh, Pilgrim's being decommissioned. Or, or so you're buying as much as you can, really. Right. And, and so it's very inexpensive in the energy component. However, the capital costs to construct an, a nuclear plant are significant. Um, and so the, the projects that RMLD is involved in, which is the Millstone and the Seabrook, um, next year that debt service will be paid off. So this is the, 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 this is the, the gravy time where we're going to continue to have to pay the operations and the maintenance of that. However, all the capital investments that we've made over the last 30 years have come to fruition. Uh, so the mortgage is finally being gone. Um, and so that will help with our rate payers because that will reduce costs um, additionally. Even further. Wow. Correct. Great. Thanks. You're welcome. So this, this chart looks at May 2017, and um, our renewables have, in, have increased. If we look from 16 to 17, these are up to be about 22%, where they're around 14% last, uh, last year. Nuclear had more generation. It was around 1756 our system power is around 42.8, and our spot market was consistent around 15%. If we add on the cost structure, um, in May of 2016, our average cost was around $35 uh, per megawatt hour, or 3.5 cents. Um, in May of 2017, it was around $30. So again, these costs are a pass-through to our customers. Uh, they get um, passed through through the fuel charge adjustment. Um, and there's some lag in, in uh, there's some lag in that because of of the way the billing goes, uh, but overall from year to year there's been a reduction in the cost that we we charge our customers. Thank you. No sir. Thank Good. you. Thank you, Jane. Okay. You're welcome. Are you doing Fordham Road too? Oh, yep. Okay. <laughs> You give us a setup on that. Sure. Go for it. Um, the RMLD has been working with a, develop, a solar developer at 4050 um, Fordham Road in Wilmington. Uh, the size of the array is approximately 1.8 megawatts AC. Uh, we're looking at a 20 year contract. It's with Kearsage Solar LLC. Uh, they're de a developer out of Watertown, Mass. Um, they plan on constructing just a little under 5,000 panels at this location. Uh, the approximate annual generation will be about 1,500 megawatt hours per year, um, and it's looking at a 20-year contract. Um, the department is proposing to use this project as our solar choice phase two. Uh, we have not begun the marketing campaign because it's contingent on the board approving the contract. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have a waiting list of customers who have signed up um, in excess of uh, 87 customers, I believe, wow. without any marketing. That's good. Okay. And this was uh, voted on by the CAB. They have approved. Correct. The CAP, CAP approved it in their uh, May meeting. In their May meeting, and, and the board originally had discussed this back in June at, at the June 15 executive session, and did approve that at, at that meeting. So, but we do need to actually take a formal vote here at, at this meeting. So, if somebody will make the motion, I'll, I'll make the motion. Go ahead. <coughs> Move that the RMLD Board of Commissioners <laughs> authorize the General Manager of Reading Municipal Light Department to finalize negotiations and execute a contract with Kearsarge Solar LLC for the output of a facility at 40-50 Fordham Road, Wilmington, Massachusetts. Is that seconded? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Further discussion? I see none. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Opposed? That motion carries 5-0. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Very good. Okay. Me, you're up. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Amir. So my report for the month of May, I guess. Yeah. Looks good. Waiting for the <laughs> yeah. waiting oh, for no the mistake. Oh, oh, blue sky. slide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Better be blue than cloudy, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Red. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is for the month of May report. Uh, the first slide, you see the capital improvement projects, the construction projects, basically. 
and the percentage completed for each project. That's going to bring the <coughs> total year to date FI17 to 588,355 for this category. Obviously, we got other categories uh, in our budget that was uh, approved by the board for 9.4 million. Uh, year to date on all the categories, the spending was uh, for the month of May was closed at 6.4 million. And uh, obviously, we got more coming up uh, in the month of June. You have to pay the generator. That's another two million, and that's going to bring it up to close to what we asked for, which uh, that's great. That routine construction. The next slide it shows you for those categories for the month of May, we spent $118,263. That brings the fiscal year to date to $1.724 million <coughs> uh, for the routine constructions. Uh, <coughs> The routine maintenance. Uh, these are the seven or eight maintenance categories, seven maintenance categories that uh, we are working on. We're making great progress on those. Basically, the substations are in good shape, uh, which is good. That's uh, what we need to uh, be watching. Uh, the pole inspection program is going great. We're making great progress on those. On the double poles, we're making great progress for uh, in North Reading because that was their uh, area that we had the heaviest double poles so we are moving removing like 10 or 15 a week mm. so we're making good progress for those uh, you know removing the pole butts uh, the transform replacement program it's great we're making good progress manhole inspection porcelain cutout tree trimming and basically at the substations we had no hot spots so those maintenance that we've done it's paying off really it's the system is in solid shape at the source at least Nice. For now, the double poles we got sixteen thousand approximately poles that you know fifty. The ownership is fifty fifty, but custodial in uh, it the varies between the Verizon and Reading. Uh, so North Reading uh, and half the Reading is uh, our responsibility, <coughs> and the rest is Verizon's custodial area. The next uh, slide, you see the engine. The uh, engine is the program that uh, shows ball in court basically for transfers, pole butt removals, and uh, the installations. Uh, that's it for the town of Linfield. You see Reading, North Reading, and Wilmington. Uh, and for those, as you could see, still for the North Reading uh, and Reading also, we got 68 and 67 poles that we need to be removing the pole butts. Uh, and we got some transfers that we were really good. We were good in keeping up with the transfers, but basically what the holdup is really is with Verizon and uh, Comcast. And I don't want to push, push the blame on them, but you know, uh, they got their own challenges to deal with too. So as soon as they, everybody is uh, basically done the transfer, then we get to them and we schedule them for the uh, removals. And again, I want to stress the importance uh, first, I want to thank the community for all four communities to, you know, work with us, bear with us. I know they look ugly, but, uh, you know, we need to uh, put them on the schedule. We've got lots of maintenance going on, so, and we get to them in the order of priority and obviously the safety. So the stuff that needs to be moved faster, some stuff you see that, you know, we get, get done faster than the others. So basically, we are making good progress on those. Uh, the, la the next slide is the reliability indices. That's great. Our reliability is strong, is good, uh, and it's really getting better and better. Uh, so in all three categories, SAD, KD, and SAFI, so you see the numbers are well below uh, national and uh, regional averages. And the last slide is showing the ca outage cause causes, basically. The on the right side, you see the five years average. On the left side, you see for the month of May, we've had some challenges due to the storms, that the trees, they came down, lots of trees, and that's always an issue. But uh, in the categories of the equipment and wildlife, you could see that, you know, compared to the five years uh, averages, we're making some progress. That means that, you know, we're stepping in the right direction with those maintenance programs, which shows, you know, <coughs> improvements. So basically, that concludes uh, my report for the day, for the night. <laughs> right. um, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to <coughs> take them. Yes. I, on the double poles, um, <coughs> so and I'm a little fuzzy here, but I know that one of the two is, is renegotiating its franchise with the town right now. 
And I just wonder if the, if the town is aware, or the towns, that they're the reason why there's double poles and all this unsightliness around town, and maybe this is a point of leverage. I mean, it's... Yep. I just wonder if there could be a communication over to the town halls that the reason we still have double poles is because Comcast and Verizon are not doing their jobs. Well, uh, we've been communicating at the, the meetings that we had for, right. uh, with the general manager, myself, and, yeah, uh, and Jane. Yeah. We've been stressing that. That you know, well, it takes a long time for them. Unfortunately, we don't have any leverage. Right, the we don't. Parties. Except when towns are renegotiating franchise yeah. agreements, and it's like, what are you doing to my town? And you know, we're doing the best we can because this is. I'm grateful for this is a great program engines right. that you know everybody could have an access to utilities, so right. they could see who's ball in court. You know, is right. you know, and where the people are. Where These the are hi- really are. highly profitable companies. Yeah, uh, that make money hand over fist in our communities. <laughs> and so sometimes they need to do their part. Also, all double that. poles are not really that bad. That, 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 that means that you know, the maintenance on the system is being done. Right. There is a reason for that. Some of them are due to uh, you know, more vehicle accidents, and the rest are because we're making system improvements. And as we're upgrading the stuff, which is good for maintenance, you know, that's why the, those double poles they exist. Right. I'll be nervous if they don't exist. Right, exactly. <laughs> But with, with the exception of motor vehicle accidents, that we don't want it anybody to go through that. I think what the board that. is asking yeah. for, if you get the word back to the town. Sure. We will. We have. We don't have leverage, we but we can use our mouths and right. speak. Right. Yeah. So I think the best opportunity would be at the meetings that we have semi-annually with the, with the towns. And then, you know, that's how we give, when we give them the report. They see these. And that's our opportunity, we say. But sure, we can, you know, re-emphasize and that also to the towns. The, yeah. The cable TV contracts in North Reading are being are being uh, negotiated at this point too. Right. So maybe the work can go up there also. Yeah, sure. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. it would be good to see a letter coming from the department to the towns just to say, hey, by the way, these guys need to step up the pace. And sure. when they're in, when these guys are coming to the boards of the town, the the select boards, it's an opportunity to mm-hmm. remind them of their responsibilities to maintain their infrastructure and transfer to new poles in a timely manner. I think we said that in, in North Reading, right, Jane? Right, we brought they didn't mention that they were in the process of negotiating. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they said that, you know, but we did the same thing at the, in the Reading also. Reading, we mentioned about the double poles and... We can remind them about that. But we can remind the town managers on something. Okay. Good, know, good, 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 very good. That effect. Okay. And I guess you wanted to know about the gener- generator, yes. the DG, where we are with it. I got great news for you. I guess after you know some challenges that you know we had on the way, finally uh, I think it all gonna be done by next Thursday. We were supposed to have the ribbon cutting today, but I pushed it off because you know we still have some final uh, uh, you know testing to that we need to do. But as of next Thursday, we are ready to go online. Basically, wow. we may have had some serious challenges that we came overcame those. Uh, you know, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank Town of North Reading uh, Administrator Mr. Gilberto and his team, Town Departments, for helping us overcome those challenges and ho- helping us, you know, to moving moving this project along, which I appreciate it. That was great uh, project, you know, that we went through, and it was a pilot, obviously, so it's expected that you meet some challenges and the pilot, the first one being done. And if we're going to continue this program, I think we're going to be, you know, more experienced mm-hmm. to meet those challenges. How, how will it work? When will it uh, start generating power? Or is it going to be to coincide with peak, uh, peak demand? Well, or? the way we're going to do that, we set up a procedure with the uh, uh, IRD department, Jane, that a day ahead we know when the next the day uh, forecast is going to look like. It's going to look like. So we're going to start generating maybe three, four hours before we hit the peak. Mm -hmm. Because our peak is different than the New England uh, ISO's peak. So we're going to make sure within that window we have the generator running. And by running the generator, obviously... So you'll err on the side of caution. Yes. It'll start before and after. Before and and after. after. That's how we're going to do that. And we are in direct communications. (laughs) Next Thursday, uh, engineers and technical services, my staff, they're going to be trained. And actually, once we connect it to the SCADA, we can operate it from home. <laughs> Can't turn it on tomorrow, can you? No, tomorrow, what's, I'm sorry? 
can't turn it on tomorrow. No, unfortunately, Why no, because be a, we have to do uh, some final testing. Yeah. And, you know, uh, uh, the testing, actually, it's very important because, you know, uh, the contractors, they want to just to close the generator to our system. Uh, I have some concerns about, you know, paralleling it to my, our system. We, I need to do further testing, make sure that their system is in phase with our system. Right. And we're not going to run into any difficulties. I mean, yeah, we're going to wait a little bit more, but it's worth it. So at least it's going to be done safely. But when it's running, I guarantee you it's going to be 100% safe and we can. It's a great engine. It's a great uh, product, really. Uh, we've, we have been running it several times, uh, I mean, obviously with no load. And the generator is running perfect. So it hasn't been, there hasn't been any issues with the unit itself. And, you know, we got seven years warranty on it anyway. So, but we should be able to f do f fine well. All right, very good. You, you, have, a, you have a bid here too? You're I beg your pardon? You're doing the bid? Yeah, the, the uh, bid. Clothing? Okay. Yes. Could you give us a setup and we'll get the motion. So this bit you want me to explain, or the, yeah, this is the FR clothing basically. By uh, we we are liable for that. We need to provide FR to uh, with the arc flash study uh, about a year, year and a half ago, and as a result of that, you know, we need to pro pro provide PPE for the line workers and technical services engineers. So this is level two, category two, which covers approximately 80% of the situations in the system. We also have category four that we already purchased the equipment for category four. So now we're going, uh, we had a bid out for FR2 level. We sent a bid to 16 companies. Out of those, uh, there were some non-submittal uh, non responses from Graybar, uh, Slate Rock, Safety, and Wesco. Basically, the reason they were, in, they, they explained that, you know, well, either they are, a, a, they're getting into the program or they, they, they cannot provide services at this time because they're out of stock. So that's why they decided not to participate. But the uh, sealed proposals were received from uh, uh, Action Apparel uh, Incorporation and Air Gas Safety and Hudson uh, Workwear and Tyndale Company. Basically, the two responsible, responsive bidders were uh, Tyndale and uh, uh, Action Apparel. So the difference between this, those two was $255. The lowest bidder was Action, and uh, the highest bidder was Tyndale. But the problem it was that, you know, Action, they didn't have any management program. But uh, for, the, for the money that, you know, for $250 more, we get a better management program from Tyndale. So we don't have to keep track of, you know, the changes and everything that, you know, they keep the accounting over there. So we don't have to use re other resources to, to keep track of, the, you know, the accounting and the reporting and everything. So the recommendation is to award a bit to Tyndale for that small increase. Somebody want to read the motion? Yeah, I'll do it. Uh, move that. Proposal 2018 for Category 2 Flame Retardant Clothing, an allowance based managed clothing program, be awarded to Tyndale Company as the most responsible and eligible bidder. In the estimated amount of $72,978.50, pursuant to MGLC 30B on the recommendation of the general manager. This is a three year contract, dollar amounts that's per employee. That's not part of the motion, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I, all right. That's not part of the motion. All right. Mm -hmm. It is a three-year contract, but that's yeah. not part of the motion. All right. You can certainly read it, though. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. I'll let it go. <clears throat> All right. Very good. All right. Discussion? Anybody? Second. Seeing? Oh, we had second. Yes. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? That motion carries 5-0. So we're up to general discussion. Um, under general discussion, I have just one item. Um, the subcommittee on the payment to the town has not met yet. Um, I don't know if the CA, we're waiting for the CAB members to be appointed. Can we get the message to the CAB that they need to get the members appointed someday soon? Uh, if you would, please. <laughs> Are you aware of this no. committee? Yeah. Um, 
I actually uh, did not attend the last meeting. Uh, and our, actually, our last meeting was canceled because there wasn't a quorum. Right. And the meeting yeah. before that, I was not at. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. I, I have that explains why you don't know about this. <laughs> I have heard from the, uh, the, the running selectman is Dan Hensinger, who's representing the running selectman. And he caught me over the weekend in church and asked me what we were doing, you know. It's been a while since we met, and I said, oh, I don't know, I'll go back and find out. So, sure. all right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the uh, commitment is to report out at the next town meeting, which is <laughs> November ish. November, right. Okay. Yeah, so it, it, it's good to put some uh, attention units on it because it'll be. September right. before we know it, and then right, exactly. We'll be uh, we'll get a couple of meetings. Right, because so. we got to we got to set up. We got to look at you know availability of everybody for dates and so forth on that too. So, yeah. who's uh, who's representing us? The the board. John and <coughs> you two guys. John. Okay. So, all right, very good. Um, and other than that, we've got the board meetings. We got the NEPA conference in August. Um, the board meeting is September the twenty first. But Tracy tells me there's a problem with that. This is September? In September. Board meeting? So the board meeting in September is scheduled for the 21st, but that's Rosh Hashanah that date. So, so um, um, I don't know how people. Okay. I won't be here on the 28th. This is uh, the NERA conference. Yeah, is that where you're going to be? Yeah. yeah. 14th. 14th is better. You want to do let we could do the day before the is the 20th better for everybody um the 20th's even better um, we do a wednesday that the day before no because i think it starts on wednesday three day okay oh okay all right sorry us gentiles don't know <laughs> so it's the 14th the 14th okay 14th no august meeting no, because we got the NEPA conference. Because the NEPA, yeah. NEPA conference. You will. We, we usually post that for the board for the for the and the NEPA conference. Usually, that is posted. I don't know who wants to come, but if anybody wants to come and see us, you know, sit around the <laughs> sit around the porch or whatever. <laughs> yeah, the the night of the fourteenth, I will not be here. I have a conflict uh, out of town meeting. The fourteenth may be a tough date for me. I'm going to have to see. You may have to. Do we may have to. Availability. You want to, if we go if to you have a quorum and whatnot, do you? If we go to the 28th, that's a, that's, I hear that's another problem. Yeah, well, Dave and I are both on the 28th. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm on the 28th, too. Yeah. I'm in Scotland. Yeah. Well, I might leave it as the 14th, and then we'll uh, talk about it at NEPA. Okay. Fine. Yeah, that's good, yeah. All right. Yep. Is, the, is the CAB going to NEPA? Some members are, from what I understand. Is that right? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going. I don't know You're if other members are going. But yeah. Uh, we need to schedule another strategy meeting at some point too. That's what we need to schedule it, um, at this point. So um, I don't know if you want to do that in August or whether you want to wait till September mm. at this point. Uh, September. September. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because we got the highest priority items already, right? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because the staff, understandably, has been uh, okay. uh, tied up with a lot of day-to-day -day activity. So some of the other things, even though they're not priority items, require some uh, inputs from. Right, and I understand the staff yeah. is gathering information for us too, yeah. that they need some yeah. time to gather. So. so I would think August is probably not a good. Yeah, we'll do September. Yeah. We'll do September. <laughs> we'll talk about that. We'll circulate, <laughs> Tracy, I'll have cir Tracy circulate the, um, a request for uh, dates of availability of dates in September. Let me get that. Yes. Mr. Chair, yeah. I don't know. <coughs> Mr. Former Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that feels good. <laughs> uh, so I'm just wondering, since we do broadcast uh, to town, whether you want to make any comment on the NEPA conference or the uh, what you referred to earlier, the town uh, meetings, so just so people are aware of what we're talking about. The NEPA conference? Well, the NEPA conference is yeah. the uh, Northeast Public Power Association, their annual conference. And it's August the 20th through the 23rd. This year it's in Newport. And it's basically the, it's the trade association that deals with municipal uh, utilities and it gathers all the different people together and they have different speakers to come and speak and uh, it's also a great opportunity to network with people 
very much so to talk to other people and see what they're doing in other other systems. You know, it's a great time to network with people and that and talk to all them on that. So that's really NEPA this year. So starts on a I believe the 20th is a Sunday and it ends on the after breakfast on on Wednesday. So and it's in Newport, Rhode Island this year. So yeah. all right, very good. Uh, policy committee. We got to have a policy committee at some yeah, point. Yeah. Um, I think that Colleen wants to call the policy committee, which is both Dave and John. Yeah. Um, and I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. 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 Yeah.